really too big and instead use these M8 bolts which I supply. So the fitting on your prop shaft side is exactly the same, that will just go on fairly easily and you can squeeze it on with these pipe pliers. Um, but the other side, I'll show you. So what you're going to do instead is to put these bolts through the holes once you've taken these out and we're going to take them out using these two 17mm nuts which I supply you with the kits. Um, so the only other tool I think you're going to need um, is uh, something like a, a crowbar or something to put between these pins when you, when you take them out and stop the sharp turning. So what you'll do is you'll get your 17mm socket and spanner I've got these ready and you'll tighten once they're both fully down on the threads you'll tighten up the outside one and you'll stop the inside one turning get it really tight and then if you can get these two nut flats to line up too that's even better because it allows you to get the socket right down and then if you stop the whole thing turning on the other two studs ideally you find that the stud will come right out here it comes this is a brass um, flange you'll find the steel ones can be more difficult and if you've got a steel one that's rotten in then you could use a blowtorch to heat up this rim and it will make it easier or you could take the flange off and put it in the vise so once you've got that out it allows you you'll see to put the bolt in from the rear into that hole and uh, that is the way that you will fit all three on your new uprated disc so what I'll do I'll just repeat that for all three and uh, you can see how it's fitted together so just another tip here, um, don't take the studs out completely because you'll need them to lock the shaft while you're getting. So put them back in loosely and that will enable you to lock the shaft with those two studs while you are loosening the third. So once you've got them finger tight, you can wind them back in and it's going to help you to undo it all three without having any way of blocking this uh, from rotating with another method. Um, so that's two. I'm sorry about this uh, jangling noise, it's because I'm using this bench with all the tools on it in a boat. You've probably got some nice soft cushions and things you can put things on. So that, I just put this finger tight in. I've got one more to do now. And this is this is um, not only neater; it makes it easier to get the uh, rubber coupling over these M8 bolts because the M10 bolts are a little bit more um, spread apart, and the stretching is a bit more difficult. So here we go, and this is the final one. That's turning immediately. If it's not turning, you haven't got the two nuts done up tight enough, so don't allow the nut to turn on the stud, because that could be damaging the threads. Just tighten the nuts together tighter if it's not turning, and if it gets to the point where you think it's going to shear off because of rust or something, that is when you want to either put a blowtorch on here to help ease it out, or if it's still in danger of shearing off, which you can't do, then you need to extract the whole um, coupling and put it in the workshop so that you can have the studs taken out. Or you might decide, no, there's a risk that I'm going to shear off these studs. What I'm going to do, I'm going to give up on this method and use the other method of just stretching over them. So it's up to you. Um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I would always say, Remove these studs if you can, 
because the M8 solution is a lot more like the original that Maya had. So now we've got all three off, you can put your three bolts through, no problem at all, and uh, we're ready to assemble with the new coupling. One, two, three. find this really easy to put together because there's a nice little bit of play on these studs. It's the easiest way possible. Once you've got those on then you just have your standard washers, soft side facing the rubber and your nuts. There we go put them on loose, all three, and rotate and tighten as you go, another one or two, two, one more to two, One thing I find useful when I'm working on somebody's boat is to have a magnet stick to pick up all the steel fixings uh, ready and also one of those uh, gripper tools in case a nut drops down the bilge and I don't want a long trip to the parts place. Um, I save a lot of time if I've got a retrieval tool. And uh, what I always say, if you're changing the carburetor or working on the impeller, is get yourself a tea towel or rag under here before you start, and it catches all the parts and tools that um, you didn't um, manage to keep in place. So basically now we're just going to do these up. And you'll see it's a nice solution. A lot easier to assemble than stretching over the end tanks, and that makes it a bit easier for future people servicing it in future, not just ourselves. Once again, you'll see uh, we don't need on this arrangement the bushes. We don't need the circular disc or the circular rubber disc gasket behind there, which were all designed to strengthen the weak coupling, which we've now got a strong one in. And we've discarded those items because they just make it too stiff and transmit too much noise. So there we are. That's what it looks like assembled, nice and neat, and you've got enough twist in this so that if there's any misalignment, the vibration won't be amplified through the boat as it was before. So the parts we've discarded are this reversing flange, which you could hacksaw off, or if you've extracted the prop shaft like here, you can just pull this off and there should be a rubber disc behind it and the three bushes and your torn or damaged um, late style coupling which was weak so you can put those as emergency spares if you want but I don't think you're ever going to break this and uh, it's a matter of freighter part. So this is Nick from Vire Engines. Uh, I just run through one final thing which is if you want to remove the coupling to get it in the workshop I'll show you how to do that so let's just zoom out mm -hmm. so the tools you're going to need for that is you will need a 24 millimeter socket to undo the nut 
take this side and the coupling off and then to stop the shaft turning you, I use a crowbar between the two studs not on the threads if you can avoid it and that way you can get a nice torque you might need an extension bar on that um, wrench I've actually got a meter long one which I use sometimes and I get about 40 foot pounds on there once you've got it undone a quarter turn it, you won't need this anymore and then you will almost always need a puller so I've got a three legged puller and take the nut off until it's only on one turn then get the puller on tighten it up until you see the um, the, the flange which you're trying to remove come away from the engine a few millimetres that means it's a bit loose and then you can take the nut off put the puller back on and twist it till it's nearly off if you need to get the last bit off you can tap these ears with a hammer this way and it comes off and then I would say before you put it back on after you've changed or removed your studs get yourself a round file or a dremel drum and just lightly sand any corrosion or stains from the inside of this bore so when you tap it on carefully making sure the wood rough key is okay um, with a bit of sealant uh, that it's not going to jam it's nice and smooth and uh, put it back together use the crowbar and a wrench get about 40 foot pounds on there there's a lock washer in there you'll see and uh, that's when you've got all of your studs happy okay um, if you get really stuck and you've damaged it I do have spare flanges pretty much spare anything for you so get in contact with me it's nick at viaengines.com thanks for watching